Right then, hands up, who owns a sports watch like this one and doesn't really know how to use all of its fancy features? Yeah, you're definitely not alone. Nowadays, they pack a heck of a lot into these watches, so it can seem a little bit overwhelming. And even for those that feel like they have a fairly good grasp of using them, there are potentially ways that you could be getting more from your sports watch. Like, for instance, changing some of the screens so it displays different data for interval sessions, changing them between disciplines and even changing some of the settings so you can allow better data analysis post-workout. Well, I'm going to be running through all of this today and more using our partner's watch, the Polar Vantage V. But obviously, this applies to any sports watch, so don't worry if you currently own a different brand or model. Okay, so we have received loads of questions over the last year or so regards to sports watches, how we use them, how we set them up, how we personally use them, and so on. And most of these have been regards to running. So I'm gonna kick off with that today, but obviously if you use your sports watch for swimming or cycling, don't worry because I will be touching on that too. And obviously a lot of these features and tips do cross over anyway. So let's begin by taking a look at some of the features and functions that you may have in your sports watch. So firstly, it's likely to have GPS, a barometer and some form of measuring heart rate. Now, the GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System, tracks your position and therefore recording how far you go and how fast you go. The barometer measures the air pressure and therefore the altitude. So we can take a look at our elevation change throughout an activity. And then the heart rate. Now you may have a watch like mine, which is rather fancy and has a built-in heart rate monitor and therefore utilizing optical heart rate measurement. But whether your watch has this or not, it will likely be able to pair with and communicate with an external device, such as a chest strap heart rate monitor. Well, that is the basics and fundamentals of a GPS sports watch. But obviously, some come with more features and functions than others. Take this Polar Vantage V, for instance. It has a running power built into it. It can give me feedback on my training load, my recovery, my sleep, just to name a few. Which is all amazing, but I imagine when you actually go to set that sports watch up, you're left scratching your head a little bit because the number of options available to you, the number of slight variations in data fields can be really quite confusing. What do you actually want displayed on your watch screen? Well, I think it's time we go take a seat, we grab a brew and we explain. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through some suggestions here using my own watch, but having used these devices for years and having coached athletes for years too, I feel like I've got a really good setup with my screens. So I'm actually using Polar Flow here, which is Polar's online training platform. And this actually allows me to customize and change the screens from within that. But if you're using another device, you may actually be able to do that on the device itself or their own platform. Now, I also like to suggest that you have a number of different screens that you can choose from for different types of training sessions. So my first one here is my play screen. So this is for those everyday easy runs, those fun runs. Now, this needs to have those basic metrics. So you want your elapsed time, you want your distance, you want your speed or the pace that you're going and also your heart rate. Okay, but now if I flick to my next screen, I have what I call my business screen. So this is everything that you need to see during a hard run session or during some intervals. I've tried to keep this fairly easy, fairly simple here, just four fields so you can quickly see it during a hard run session. So now we have lap duration, lap distance. Again, we've still got that speed or pace. I've also got your heart rate too. Now for this to all work, there are a few ground rules because you need to hit that lap button when you start a session, when you start a rep, end a rep, start recovery, end a recovery, basically at any interval point. This will then be able to tell you how long or how far you've gone on that specific interval, how much recovery you've got left, and so on. Now, just to clarify, this does not stop that overall elapsed time. If you flick back to that first screen, you'll still see that ticking away. I also, additionally, I do recommend switching off any auto lap feature that you may have already enabled on your watch because that can get really confusing. Now, by doing all of this, you are going to not only massively help yourself out, but also a coach if you do have one, because when you come to analyzing that workout, post session, you'll be able to see those individual laps and really analyze those blocks. And trust me, having been a coach, this helps massively. Okay, so they're my two most important screens, my play screen and my business screen. But I do actually have a few extras, which I maybe don't refer to quite as often, but 
they're quite fun. They're entirely optional. I just quite like to refer to them from time to time. One of which is power. Yep power for running now this is a new one for me too it's quite a novelty obviously i'm really used to it for cycling but i'm actually really enjoying using it for running now at the moment now i just quite like to refer to this screen from time to time but i may actually start incorporating it into my play screen and even my business screen for run sessions now currently it displays my current power in the middle of the screen my max power at the top and my average power at the bottom now I am actually quite fortunate in the fact that the Vantage V has a built-in power meter which is really quite unusual but that doesn't mean that your device can't pick up or read power it just may mean that you need an external power meter such as a foot pod to record this. Now if I scroll through again I've got a screen for altitude so this displays my current altitude in the middle, ascent at the top and descent at the bottom which are all interesting things to look at from time to time and then similarly if I scroll to the next screen similar format I've got for cadence or steps per minute. Now to really get the most out of your device, I really recommend you find your zones. And there are a number of different ways of doing this, some easier, some harder than others. The easiest of them all is the age formula, 220 minus your age. And that will give you a very rough maximum heart rate. Another method is to literally go as hard as you can in some sort of session or race and find your maximum heart rate. Although that is gonna hurt quite a lot. Finally, another method is to do a threshold run test. You can do this in a lab and you'll get some very precise results, or you can do this yourself out on the road. If you're going to do that, I would suggest doing a 30 minute all out effort on your own. And then with that new threshold or maximum heart rate, you'll be able to calculate your zones. For myself, I use my maximum heart rate, put into Polar Flow, and that churned out and automatically created my zones for me. Now, when I look at my device, I know that my zones are bang on. And with that, you can really take it up a notch if you want to. Now, this isn't actually something that I've played around with too much, but in all honesty, I really do like the idea of it because on a number of watches now, you can actually set limiters to these zones. So it will notify you and alert you if you step out of the zone that you're required to be in. So on my watch, for instance, I would need to create a little phase training workout and then create targets within that workout as to what zone I need to be in at certain times throughout. So when I do head off and do that workout, it'll tell me not only when I need to start a rep or interval or even end that rep or interval, it'll also tell me if I'm in the correct zone or not. And this really comes into its own in the water because obviously you're not able to check your watch quite so often as you're swimming along. So instead, it beeps and buzzes as you go. So both of which you can hear and feel and then notified as to whether you're in your zone or you're stepping outside of that zone. In terms of what it actually displays, that's obviously slightly less important because you're not able to monitor your watch quite so regularly as you swim along. But I would recommend having overall lap time distance and heart rate and then when you go to do a session you want to have lap time and lap distance and then for biking you're probably going to want to change a few more of those data fields but still sticking with those two screens that we we're talking about for the run that play screen and business screen for the everyday rides and those sessions now on that play screen as a minimum you're going to want overall elapsed time distance speed and heart rate and then if you do have room for it and you do have a power meter then power is quite nice and also cadence. Whereas on my biking business screen I would recommend having current lap time, power, heart rate, cadence and if you have room for it average power and even normalized power if you can. Now that is a lot of information there so if you do have any questions on any of that then please do drop them in the comment section below I will happily answer them. And as I said earlier, this is exactly how I have my devices set up and have had for a number of years and it's been everything that I've needed to perform. However, I do appreciate that other people out there may prioritise different metrics due to the location that they're in, the environment, what they're training for. So if that is you, I'd love to hear from you and why it differs. So again, please do get involved in the comments section below. If you liked today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, click that globe and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see our running with power video, then just click down here. If you'd like to see our Polar Vantage V unboxing video, then just click down here.